Welcome to Coffee World, Boutique Washington's best coffee-themed amusement park. All of our attractions are family-friendly and available to children of all ages, just like our coffee. So, take a sip of our Oh Dear Diner organic coffee and let the adventure begin! Hold on for dear life on the Espresso Express! Soak in some local history at the Huatari Well, where two serial killers once hid the disemboweled bodies of their murder victims. Uh, it's not a haunted. No. <laughs> Come join Mocha Moose and the goats at our amusement park pig. Just don't share your coffee with the goats. <laughs> Seriously, stop feeding our goats coffee. Seriously, it's not amusing. Take in amazing views from the Slow Roaster Ferris Wheel. I can almost see the Watery Lighthouse trailer park. This is so much fun. And finish off at our beautiful gift shop where seniors and children under 10 receive a 9% discount on keychains and propane tags. Welcome to Coffee World. We guarantee you'll jaw a great time. Welcome back to Let's Play Alan Wake 2. I'm Burning Dog Face. And, uh, Saga is on the road to Coffee World, and I'm hoping that's a good thing. Shout out to Justin Jones. He says, That coffee fixation, is that the real danger here? So, if fiction influences the dark place, does it have to be a specific kind of fiction, or does any fiction work? What would happen if someone tried to write a high fantasy epic, or a grim dark sci fi tale? It's a terribly good question. I remember there was an uh, uh, like a trailer, like a it was the pitch trailer they used to try to sell uh, studios on the original idea for Alan Wake Two ten years ago. And uh, in addition to showing off a bunch of new monster types, it ended up going into uh, oh, more taken. It ended up going into Alan Wake's American Nightmare. There was sort of this idea that the lake was now bringing random things to life through fiction. Like, at one point, Alan's making his way through a little crappy side-of-the-road motel, and he walks through a room where the TV's on, and there's a cheesy, old-school uh, sci-fi movie playing. And then the whole building starts shaking, and the, 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 the pitch trailer ends with him running outside of the motel, looking up, and seeing that it's being lifted off the ground by the tractor beam of the, uh, like, retro UFO from that movie. Like, it was, like, a crappy special effect from the 50s brought to life. I actually remember someone saying at some point, like, maybe 2016-ish, that to them, uh... Alan Wake's American Nightmare was their way of acknowledging that Alan Wake 2 was never going to happen. Let's try this crossbow out. Even unlocked in one go. Oh yeah, you need to reload after one shot. Okay, that'll take a bit. Noted. noted. Got him right through the dark. I really wish his body would stop animating like that. I can't take the arrow back. At least I know it can be done. Oh, yeah, that guy's skin is real pallid. 
Well, let's see if I uh, committed a war crime or... Uh... No, he's gone. That was for the best. See, on the other hand, I feel like if you walked around around here with a, sh with a crossbow on your back, people would just ask questions. Oh. <clears throat> that would have been clever. Nothing under the ledge. Oh yeah, there were like fucking wolves and stuff in the woods last time. Huh. Alright, I was wondering. It seems like uh, only one large weapon ends up on her shoulder at a time. It's uh, whichever one she was using most recently. Yeah, if I switch from the shotgun to the crossbow, she uh, slings the shotgun over her shoulder, it is instantly replaced with the crossbow, and then she unslings the crossbow from over her shoulder. Kind of an odd-looking animation, to be perfectly frank. These are beautifully realistic trees. Just the randomness of the branches, the way they sway in the wind. Hello, that's important. That was the sign that means an Easter egg is around here somewhere. There's a bigger one. That must be in this direction. Ah, egg on the ground. Must be here. Look at this. A pile of them. And a campsite. Okay. Oh, I've just gotten that's a grill. Jeez. Didn't see the pan. Just a big metal frame sitting on top of the the the, the what do you call it? What is this? A backpack made of denim? I guess I've seen Stranger Things. And another lunchbox. Although not literally, because I haven't seen the show by that name. Cold Casey. Hi, hero. I think a few pieces of paper from my private fan fiction project got mixed into some of those uh, these stashes, but I don't know which ones. I posted some online, and they're getting pretty good reviews, but I'd appreciate it if you didn't read them. It's a privacy thing. I mean, I'm not actually looking at what it says on these manuscript fragments, if that helps. It won't let me. That whole house is uh, out in the water. Yeah, bad things happened here. I don't like the thought that, you know, it's not a lake, it's an ocean. So if the lake is flooding, maybe it's full. Maybe it can't hold anymore. And maybe that's why the darkness is making a move right now. Uh, Alex Casey lunchboxes. Lunchbox found on the way to Coffee World Water Area. If the author of these pages wanted privacy, that ship has sailed, I'm afraid. So I guess the cult was camping out here. Genuinely surprised it isn't more murdery. Suppose I'm not being fair. I live out in the suburbs. Oh, there's there's a bumper car car just sat out here by the side of the road. I don't think that's supposed to be there. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, the bumper car area is out here and it's flooded. Oh, I can't go any further than that. This one just must have just floated ashore with the flooding. I can see the Ferris wheel from here. The lights are all on. Hey, that's good. The lights are all on. Ooh. Cooler. Oh, no. It's just a fishing cooler. There won't be anything in there except fish. Or maybe worms or beer. That's a shame I do like bumper cars. What is that? Oh, fuck me. That's a building. Or that a door. I thought this was just the side of a mountain. That's a wall, anyway. This is the way I need to go. Oh, I don't love that noise. So, at one point in the commercial, they mentioned the Huotari Well. H-U-O-T-A-R-I. But I didn't realize until the second time I watched the ad for this video that he basically pronounces it Huotari. So I'm guessing Kuotari was the original name of the uh, the town. You know, founded by Finnish immigrants and all that. Oh, it's a Deerfest statue. Just pinned under this wall. Or fence, rather. I'm really not sure why there's a hot dog cart out here. I will give you that. Or does this count as part of the, uh, the theme park? Because it sucks out here. Maybe this is like the storage area. I would do it. Thank God, no manuscript pages in the portalette. A skid painted to look like the American flag. That's a new one. This is definitely a manuscript page. Oh yeah, it's even blurry. That's a yoink. Well, this is the right room for it. So, uh... Oh, good! The page is called Scratch on the Hunt. Scratch stalked through the forest. A terrifying dark presence in the night, more sensed than seen. Darkness boiled in his skull, like a storm cloud crammed into a bottle. The woods were alive with those he had taken. They were coming with him, directed by him, his army of darkness. His singular purpose was a sharp, pulsing black hole in his head, waves roaring out of it to whip his flock into a frenzy, filling them with his purpose. The clicker, he wanted it to make his horrific ending to the story come true. The art was there. The clicker would push it across the final threshold, a detonator to send out a tidal wave that would spread to overtake reality. He was so close to claiming it. The Taken gibbered and shouted, straining against their invisible leashes, filled with bloodlust. Scratch let them go. They launched themselves into the night with violent glee. He ripped a signpost from the ground, swung it in his hands as if it was made of air. Ahead, the music started. It called him on. Let the final deer fence commence. That's bad. That's really fucking bad. Let the final deer fence commence was uh, written in hand. Just scrawled on there as a note. Oh boy. Oh shit. Yeah, the hole in his head. I had a feeling about that. Uh, right before Alan's chapter ended, we went back to Saga, we, he found a dead Alan sitting in a chair in his own office. With a hole in his forehead. I think that's the uh, that is, you know, in any given sense, the Alan from the previous loops. 
that the loop must end with the, uh, the darkness attacking him, as we saw, and it punched a hole in his forehead. So he's dead, and he's in the chair, and now another Alan pops up, who is the same Alan, who eventually finds that one. It has to have something to do with that symbol from the very beginning of the game, of Alan with a hole in his forehead that was glowing, and, uh, and darkness spreading out from behind his head. It looks like a gunshot, like the, the, the glow was a hole, and the, the, the darkness was blood. I really didn't want to say that, but it looked like Alan had been shot in the face by God or something. There has to be so much more to it than that. Even this goddamn hunting shed has a coffee machine in it. That's got to be... yeah, that's the direction of, uh... Wait! The gift shop? That's the first place I'm ending up at. I thought surely I'd have to go through the entire place before I got there. Oh fuck, I missed a radio tower up here. Oh yes. And before I do that, I should probably throw that onto the wall. And see if it sticks! The story. The clicker. He wanted it to make his horrific ending to the story come true. The art was there. The clicker would push it across the final threshold. Uh... The clicker! Scratch just needs the clicker to make his ending into reality. Can't let that happen. That's for later. What about over here? Trail of the Cult. Oh, whoa! You can't place things by by yourself. What is this trailer? Bloom. There is a w trailer park nearby called Watery Lighthouse Trailer Park. Yeah, the guy from the bus. I remember him. Watery Lighthouse Trailer Park. Good place to start. What Ilmo knows. He thinks I own a I owned a trailer here. Weird. Key to my trailer at Coffee World. Ilmo said someone at Coffee World could help me. Elmo is certain that I used to live here, that I owned a trailer here, that I am a member of the community. They really think I lived here. This is unnerving, but at least I can exploit it to get inside this trailer. Hello? Anyone here? Coffee World. Nope. Did they get out? Did the Taken get them? Or were they turned into Taken? I'll need to get the key to the trailer park myself. Fresh pot gift shop open Elmo 10 a.m. the key is kept in the gift shop safe. Oh, I see. I don't have the combination. Yes, of course. There we go. Fresh pot gift shop. Is this? This is not a map of... Oh, I already have a map of the region. This is just a map of Coffee World is all. So I can't collect that. Well, they want me to go in here first and find the lock safe, so let's not disappoint locked. them. Oh, the door is locked, too. Need something to jimmy it open with. Cold necklace. Ah! It's the model of the bird from the stupid commercial. Oh, what's this? A list of maintenance work. Logged maintenance, 62723, uh... June, isn't it? Coffee World entrance sign defaced. Cleaned with detergent, waxed sign. Should be good until someone tags it again tomorrow. Victor. Uh, July 5th, 2023. Slow roaster pod is stuck, won't swing. I hit it with some WD-40. Seems good for now. Yako. Hog maintenance. July 19th. Fallen tree near Latte Lagoon. Should probably call the tree guy. Chainsawed and removed, keeping the wood. Yako. August 12th, 2023. Several burned out bulbs on the percolator. Replaced and ordered more bulbs. Stewart. Alright. Uh, the last one says Squeaking on Latte Lagoon. Car B. Tightened the bolts. Less bad now. Yako. Uh, September 1st. September 10th. Percolator control panel jammed. Removed front with screwdriver, found a penny in there. Uh huh? Stewart. 
and there's sticky notes that say, Hey, the lock is jammed again. I forced it last time with the screwdriver, which has disappeared again. Put shit back when you use it. So he opened the door with a screwdriver, which I should find at the percolator. Okay. A screwdriver. Huh. I really, really hope they let me ride the ride. Because that would be very, very funny to me. Arg. No, that wasn't this. Coffee World? Coffee World. The most caffeinated place on Earth. And yet nobody's here to help me get that key. The trailer park key. Gift shop door is locked. The trailer park key. Elmo said someone would help me, but there's no one here. Looks like I'll need to find my own way inside. Getting inside. Maintenance log lifts screwdriver as last used on the percolator. Note about using a screwdriver to force a lock open. <laughs> Worth a try, I guess. Maintenance log lists screwdriver as last used on the percolator. I am pleased to figure that out on my Using own. Using screwdrivers to break into gift shops isn't exactly standard procedure. Even a screwdriver can be a key if you try hard enough. Okay, we're gonna climb- oh good, a cult symbol, right here in the park. Just hanging from a tree, and there's another one! Within, like, six feet of it. Oh, you've oh, gotta be kidding me! Boxes. And the timer is gone right as I get to the ride. Only striped cups? And, uh, I guess that's a refresh symbol, you know, the curled up arrow? Only striped cups? How is that a three-digit hint? Oh, I see. Oh, good. All the cups have name have numbers on them. And some of them have stripes. Well, I guess I will do that on the next episode of Let's Play Alan Wake 2. Something bad is going down here at Coffee World, and I intend to get to the bottom of it. But first, I intend to see if I can ride the ride. It doesn't look like it from here. Uh, no A prompt. Fine. Fine. I guess we'll keep looking around for something else to do next time. Until then, be sure to drink your coffee and stay in the light.